Hello and welcome back to the Scalable Link Cafe and well welcome back to the weekly uh, updates and some channel content because the family have gone home we all had a wonderful time here in Saudi it's great when the family come out and visit it was uh, yeah it was lovely and I actually I'll go back in a couple of weeks um, just for a week so it's a bit of a family fest at the moment um, anyway so a few things to talk about then uh, channel updates what has gone on while I've been away is I put up a video on my thoughts on pre-shading. Not only is that pre-shading black over the panel lines, the, the kind of traditional, I suppose, but also the, you know, a lighter colour in the centre of panels. And then I also talk about doing a black undercoat, marbling over the top and all of that. So I offer my opinions on that. Did exactly what I intended to, which was great. I had um, had quite a few comments on that, and we had a quite a nice discussion. So that was uh, that was really good. Um, so thank you for that. Pre shade, uh, sorry, pre shade. What am I doing? I'm reading the list here. The F4. So I put up a new style of video for me. It's a compilation of all the videos in a particular series. So the first one I did was the Zukimura F4 Phantom edited the whole lot together over some music no narration no captions nothing like that so you can just sit back listen to some uh, nice music and watch the process from start to finish and at, at the end is a montage of some high-res photos both in progress not too many of those so i'm gonna make it too long and some of the final ones that seems to have been quite popular so i'm going to do some more of those i'm going to go back into the back catalogue and I'll stitch them together. Maybe I'll do that in a few weeks time when I'm at home for a week and I've got a bit of time on my hands. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking of doing the Armour Hobby Key 84 first and then we'll just have a look in the back catalogue and hopefully I'll bring those to you. Um, they seem to be relatively popular. The ongoing project then, so part three of the H75N from Clearprop in 48 scale. I haven't even started editing that. I'm going to try and do that. I've got a short weekend this weekend, which is a, with lots of stuff going on at work, um, which I shan't bore you with. But suffice to say, we are working balls out and we are all exhausted. Um, anyway, um, enough of that. So uh, the actual editing time and all that kind of stuff has been uh, really compressed, especially with the family being here as well. I'm just going to do my best. So I'm not going to promise a video every week. I'm just going to, when I can get it done, I'll get it done and I'll get it out to you. So that's part three. That's going to deal with the construction of the airframe. And although it's a beautiful kit, I hit a few issues, which were all my fault. Nothing to do with the kit. Project update then. Uh, the current on the bench is this. The Armour Hobby Hurricane. Now, I say on the bench currently. I haven't started it yet. And uh, I'm probably not going to start it this week. The main thing with this for me is massive procrastination about what scheme am I going to do it in. I don't want to do one from the box. I originally thought I wanted to do an 87 Squadron Dieppe aeroplane. But I've done a whole load of research over that um, those colour schemes. And they were crudely brush painted in the field and I don't think that all if I try to do that authentically for me I, I just don't want that start to finish on a model so I'm not going to do that I've done so much research on intruder hurricanes it's untrue what I may do is I may do an 87 squadron hurricane that's been repainted so it appears what probably happened is, so pre-Dieppe, they were all black. For Dieppe, they had a very, because they were used in daylight operations during Dieppe and sort of dawn dusk, they had a field applied dark green and mixed grey camouflage over the top. The whole squadron was done overnight, the night before, and it was really crude. And there's some great photos of bits flaking off and all the rest of it. I think uh, Jen from Genesin, uh, Genesis Modelcraft Designs, Designs Modelcraft, um, sorry Jen, forget me, channel name wrong, 
and the wrong way around. Uh, she's just put up part two of her uh, video where she's done an 87 Squadron um, Hurricane in those markings and she's replicated the brush strokes. Um, she's pulled it off very successfully. Um, but it uh, it doesn't really appeal to me, to be honest, anymore. It, it did do, but um, I've kind of drifted away from it. It appears that those aeroplanes probably were repainted after Dieppe in slow time with dark green ocean grey upper surfaces and a lot more neat. Probably. It's also likely that the codes were later changed to the dull red. So I'm thinking maybe do an 87 Squadron in dark green ocean grey in the proper um, in the proper pattern uh, and a lot neater and then I can weather that down. That's one idea. The other idea is I could do a one squadron aeroplane because the same happened to them and there are photos of dark green ocean grey with red um, code letters and black undersides. I could do that. They were then later painted with medium sea grey underneath and definitely the photos of one squadron and three squadron aeroplanes in day fighter camouflage that have clearly been painted over the black um, and the black is coming through underneath. I, I thought about doing that as well, but again, but again yeah, I'm not sure. Um, and I really wanted to do one with the black undersides with the drop tanks on. But there seems to be so much confusion over the over the markings and I don't want to do a scruffy field painted one from 87 squadron so I'm uh, I, 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 I'm I'm really very close to going off the whole idea of a night intruder aeroplane I don't want an all-over black one to do that because that's been done to death now I'm toying with the idea of doing a tropical one just going completely off piste and doing a tropical one because all the bits are in the box um, yeah, I'm, oh God, you know, and even then, what do I do? I don't want a green and brown one because I don't think a 2C suits a green and brown one. So I either do a desert one or I do a dark green, ocean grey, medium sea grey one in the Far East with the white bands. Actually, that does quite appeal. But I do like the big roundels. And obviously they've got teeny tiny roundels. So, oh God, I'm all over the place with it. I really am. Um, but I have ordered, and it is at home, a Portrait Silhouette 3 cutter and some Aura Mask 810 masking film. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that back with me. Like I say, I'm home in a couple of weeks, so I'll be able to produce my own masks. I've, I've really put it off doing that. Obviously, as you you know, regular viewers will know, Nige, friend of the channel, he used to do a lot of my masks for me. He's having a bit of a break from the holiday, a break from the holiday, a break from the hobby. Uh, and it's one of those things where I, 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 I just don't want to invest the time to learning all of that because it takes away from bench time. But, yeah. I've bitten the bullet, so I've gone and ordered it. It's at home. I'm going to bring it out with me, and then I'm going to get someone to uh, hopefully sit me down and talk me through it, so I can learn much much quicker and not use up a lot of my bench time learning how to use that. And then I can I can do it myself. That's the plan. That's a long winded way round of saying I still don't know how I'm going to paint this, but we shall see. But I'm really excited about the silhouette cutter because it will open up. An infinite possibility of things um, you know squadron codes all them up blah 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 and do it myself that's the plan right so that's the project update on that um, on with the news then mini arts have uh, shown some pictures of their forthcoming or upcoming p47 test shots and the models built up and it looks fantastic I'll bung some up here uh, it really does look really very, very nice. Am I going to get one? I'm really not sure because, yeah, it's 
it's going to be a fantastic model, I am sure. But I've got I've got so many new kits coming, and I've and I've and I've got I I don't like having a stash. I've done a video on stashes and why I don't like having a big stash. And the stash is growing and it's growing quite quickly, to the point where I'm thinking of offloading a whole load of kits to reduce that. Uh, which is, uh, but I'm also worried about doing that because then if I do want to build one of those in the future, I'm going to have to bite back in. It's not so much the losing money side of it is, is it going to be available and blah. So, uh, my brain's all over the place on that one. Anyway, I'm digressing. Uh, Trumpeter, A6A Intruder in one seventy-second scale. This has been in the catalogue as a new kit coming soon for years. And... Obviously, I'm a big fan of 72nd scale, and finally, we've got some photos of some test shots. So it must be really, really close. The box art's out, and I really want to get that model. I've always wanted to get that model, and I am going to get that one. It comes with the flaps down, um, the air brakes open, and I'm like, oh, I wish they hadn't have done that. I wish they'd done it all buttoned up. Uh, I think it's quite unusual to see uh, an A6 just parked up with the wing spread and everything dangling with the canopy open. No doubt there are pictures out there, but um, yeah, I'd rather it all buttoned up, but uh, I really fancy that. And it's going to be really nice to have that in my 172nd scale Vietnam um, uh, collection of which I've got one in at the moment, and that's the FX Beaver. Uh, which I need to edit, it, edit that video as well. I might just do that as a one-off, to be honest. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm hoping it's going to have the option of doing everything um, all buttoned up. Because that's what I prefer. Also in one seventy-second scale Vietnam news, ResKit have announced the centerline pylon for the F-105. And that's the last bit that I need... To actually do a Vietnam F-105 because the centerline pylon doesn't come in the kit which is a pain so the normal Vietnam loadout was centerline pylon with an MER and six bombs underneath fuel tanks and then the jammer pod and maybe an aim 9 um, b on the other pylon that's the fit I wanted to do now they do all of it so on the Facebook on their Facebook page, on their announcement, I thought, oh, thank goodness, this is the final piece in the puzzle. And they went, well, hold your horses. We've got a load more stuff for the F-105 coming, including a cockpit. Um, I've already got, what I think I've already got the Airways cockpit in mind, but they're doing um, a lot more stuff for it. So I'm going to hang on and I'm going to wait for everything and I'm going to get the whole lot. Again, I'm digressing. Uh, anyway, still on Trumpeter, they've announced a one, they've thrown the hat in the ring on the 135th Apache uh, and uh, obviously a load of spears were thrown at them oh it's going to be inaccurate trumpeter rubbish blah, blah, all that crap that I can't be doing with but bearing in mind everybody it's an it's an A version and no one does it yet everyone else has done the sort of E and, and D E and the later versions but no one's done an A yet which is really intriguing so imagine this is quite an early one so very clever from trumpeter going down that route not that they care anyway I'm sure and I'm sure it'd be a big seller in China. Um, but anyway, yeah, we've got uh, that to look forward to. Border Models, they've released some pictures of test shots of their B5N2 Kate in 135th scale. And it's got stressed skin. That looks amazing. Now, 135th scale in aeroplanes causes a lot of people to chuck themselves around and get all upset. I'm going to do a separate video on my thoughts on aeroplanes in 135th scale coming soon. And that's going to be an interesting one, I'm sure. It's going to kick off some debate, as usual. But anyway, regardless, that looks like a fabulous kit. And they're releasing it not just with the carrier deck and the island, but also as a standalone model. And I actually quite fancy that. Purely because the surface detail looks utterly amazing. I really quite fancy the FW190 actually in 35th, but stash, size, blah. Talking of the stash, I have ordered two conversion kits. The first one is the Mulberry HA112K. 
K1 Bouchon. So it's a conversion kit for the ME109 uh, G uh, to convert it into the first Spanish version. And I really like this version because the nose is a lot more streamlined than the later version of the Bouchon. The classic one that you see in the Battle of Britain film and all the rest of it. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I, I was going to get it in 72nd scale, but actually I've gone for the 48th scale because I do have the Edward ME109 G... I think it's a G2 I've got in the stash and it'll work really well with that. So I've gone out and bought that one and I'm actually quite excited about that because that's going to be quite an unusual looking model. The other one is... I won the Laminar Flow Lottery, as it were, Laminar Flow Designs, and I managed to get a hold of a Spitfire Mark 14 uh, conversion in 30 second scale for the Tamiya kit. I've ordered the Tamiya Mark 8 because it comes with a retractable tail wheel and the wing fuel tanks, so it's going to be an easier job um, of a conversion. And I went for the Razorback version. I nearly went for the bubble version because I really quite fancy doing at some stage a Mark 18 in 208 Squadron, one of my old squadrons when I was in flying training, 208 Squadron in the slate grey, dark slate grey, dark earth markings that um, had some nicky nacky new in Palestine slash Israel blah and I think that would look like a really neat model as well but it's very expensive and I had to kind of nail the colours to the mast so I've gone for the Mark 14 Razorback and I'm really excited about doing that. What I will be doing is I will be ordering a whole ordering a whole load of Barracuda goodies to go with that as well and I want that to be a really special project and that will be coming to the channel at some stage as well as the Mulberry uh, Bouchon. Talking to Mulberry, Mulberry Bouchons I've also ordered something else I've ordered an AZ Models Bouchon, the classic Bouchon, I can't remember the designation now, the one with the, mm, the big chin, the one in nine, and I've done that in 72nd scale, because out here I have the Tamiya ME109 G6 kit, and what I want to do is convert that into a Bouchon. Um, I've got the Avia S199 in 72nd scale. And I think it'll look quite nice alongside those as a bit of a kind of weird 109 type conversion thing in 70 second scale. What I should have done really is got the Mulberry in 70 second scale as well and have them all kind of lined up in a little collection. But I do quite fancy that in 48th, if I'm honest. Um, there we are. So an awful lot going on on the channel, actually. A bit of a spending splurge. But some really interesting stuff coming to the channel um, in due course. What I've also done is I've ordered a couple of um, resin seats for my Tamiya Tomcat because I need to get on with that as well. I want to get that done before I come home at Christmas. So it's an incredibly busy, busy, busy time. Um, so what I'm going to do is I was going to about to stop waffling then. I've also got a couple of other purchases that I bought this afternoon at Jareer Bookstore, which is a little bit like W. H. Smith's and PC World all wrapped into one. It's a brilliant shop. I bought this. It's a knife set um, and uh, some really cool blades in here actually. There's a, a standard blade obviously but there's a chisel type blade, there's a scribing type thing and there's also this weird sort of curved thing which I thought would be really good for scribing you know in really tight corners, wing roots, that kind of thing. So I went out and bought that. That was cheap. That was about five quid. In fact, here we are, it's on the back, 25 sar, about five quid. Brilliant. I also bought this pen. It's a red, um, not a calligraphy pen, but a red sort of, and it's not a felt tip pen. You know sort of mean, like a draftsman's pen in red. Because that is going to be um, really, really cool for doing round the edges of doors on US Navy aeroplanes. So I bought that as well. Oh, that was a long one, wasn't it? What's the camera say? Almost 20 minutes. In fact, one hack. Exactly 20 minutes. So a bit of a long one, but like I say, I've been away uh, from the bench for a couple of weeks. 
and I'm back for a couple of weeks and then I'm going away again for another week and I've got a stack of stuff at home. So when I go home, expect a unboxing from my man cave video, which will be really cool. There we are. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go and crack on editing the H75N whilst drawing over this thing, whilst um, continuing the procrastination of what scheme to do it in. There we go. So thanks very much for watching. Look out for all the cool stuff coming on the channel. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. So cheers. Bye bye.